it. And I don't know what to teach. We just run, see, ask questions, and go to the next one. Um, some of you, yes, yeah, so later, just you run, I run, we will check. I hope to be done within like 10 minutes. The next code is our life and destiny for the next two months. Oh, oh my. Okay. We will have uh, in about like a couple of weeks, we will have a, another midterm where you will report how this second code is working. This is pretty really long. This one that we're doing now. Huh? This one that we're The second one. First one is just little entertainment. Okay. And second one is serious. Unless you decide and, and tell that you want uh, true exams. Mm -hmm. okay. You don't want. We already voted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So no. No retroactive voting. Yeah. Yeah. Once you voted, you're locked in. Um. Well. So the merger of the first and second code is. Unlikely. I, I, at least I never did. But if any of you would select, um, I'll, I'll describe in which project one may want to merge first and second codes, uh, which is like very low probability that any of you will select the following project for the research. Suppose any of you is in, um, you can see maybe three projects where, where it can be. And when we will come to the uh, stage of selecting actual new research projects, I will offer like a couple of that. You select or you will bring up your own. So suppose, uh, do you know four parents? Right? Correct. Like planner stuff. And you can put metal inside. If you do dimer, you can put metal one, metal two, and then do EPR, pulsed EPR, not the one that we have, but more advanced one. And then one creates uh, like spin flip on one, and then waits how long would it take to flip the spin on the second one. So for such project, if, and it is needed for quantum information processes project in the future. If anyone does it, uh, merger of first and second codes of the would be meaningful. Uh, even places two metal impurities into a semiconductor, it looks how they talk to each other. Yes, also. Or if anyone looks for carbon nanotube, which is uh, absorbed but doesn't emit and uh, is magnetically neutral, but then one can make a chemical doping, uh, uh, local impurity with speed, like almost a radical one radical, another radical. And then they would have a uh, response onto EPR uh, stimulus, like if, if one applies uh, um, appropriate magnetic field and, and uh, constant and, and um, alternating, one can induce spin flip and wait until this spin flip transition will go from one impurity to another one. If anyone who looks that his or her destiny is in this project, then be attentive Code number one. It, it doesn't look like your future interest. You just play a few minutes with it and, and then stay friends. Uh, the second code is un unavoidable. As soon as you voted for the projects, we all will do deep, dig deep inside and um, as we will have at least two, maybe three meetings where we just get acquainted with the code and then you do presentations on it. Okay, so please launch MATLAB, download the codes, and start uh, running the, the first one. Uh, sitting in the air and the second code. In the second or in the first? Uh, the, the one that's not Slater. But let's, let's do. I'll, I'll be very happy to help debugging the second one as well as the first one. But let's uh, play with the uh, the slate. So. Save it. 
So probably let's uh, run it uh, together and see what, what happens. So, um, I don't know why I'm doing it because you, you can do it the same or better. So just pressing enter several times. So it is uh, the nodal plane goes one or another direction, right? Um, and then if we compose uh, the anti-symmetric Slater product out of this uh, two two-dimensional functions, they will be anti-symmetric, which means uh, by swapping the uh, independent variables, the function will change its uh, sign. Right? And we can look on how, how it is programmed. Most important is that uh, the here is the little button for color code. Yes. So uh, yellow and orange means positive, blue means uh, negative, and zero is green. So there is a green in the middle, not a plane when x1 is x1 is equal to x2. And this is a reason why. Slater designed his term. Uh, this little thing, oh, I'm looking for a symbol of rotation. No, it's not available here. But um, this is the same color code. Uh, green on the far off diagonal means zero. And as soon as we approach the central line, it becomes very negative. Dark blue or very positive. Uh, dark orange, dark yellow, bright yellow. Dark yellow is some strange, like dark white. Um, and it, there is a discontinuity on, on the, in the middle. So this is a map of Ohm interaction between two particles, which has uh, indefinite infinity plus minus infinity on the main diagonal. When we multiply uh, our non-symmetrized, non slater products uh, onto this function, we will, the product will have infinite values. Uh, yes, infinite values on, on the diagonal. And performing a procedure of expectation values, one would get infinite value of interaction between two particles, which means the particle will explode, it will fly away from each other because there is infinite energy that repels them. Make sense? Is it? No? Oh, okay. And if you multiply anti-symmetrized uh, two particle wave function with the columbic uh, kernel, then nothing changes dramatically because uh, these functions are zeros at the at the um, center. And then there is a computation of the uh, expectation value. So I am going to walk along the sheets and make sure that you can run these pictures. I wasn't intending to do any homework, but as a safety measure, you can copy paste a couple of figures into your repository. And then uh, after seeing that you all get it, maybe I will briefly within like a couple of minutes, focus on the pieces of code, but we need to done with it as quickly as possible. Okay. I like these ones. Oh, I was just like kidding. This one's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, it's done. You know what this looks like? This looks like, uh, like in SpongeBob when you have like their eyes are like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. So, uh, uh, the independent variable goes from zero to pi, both x and y. And here we do have uh, non symmetrized functions, and I skip the square roots normalization. Um, 
sign that makes up period along from uh, zero to pi, and another is double argument. And anti symmetrized when we swap the order of uh, x1, x2, x1, x2. Um, Now, uh, I used to have a little challenge how to program the Coulomb thing. Uh, the argument for the inverse function, one, one over delta R. The argument should be two dimension. And um, the but um, if anyone needs it better let's check and visualize it So um, the argument should, should be a matrix because we want two dimensional function. But if one, one, um, one uh, independent argument changes, it should be defined everywhere. And if you have the second one, uh, it is the same thing. And if we uh, subtract them, then it will be just rotated along the diagonal. And then if we uh, perform the uh, inverse, so note that if one makes one divide by something, it may not work. Uh, it works for matrices, it works like power to minus one. So mesh. So here is this um, uh, thing with discontinuity. Right? And what, what else? When uh, the so we may want to take absolute value of, of home. Because uh, it is not uh, we have we have absolute value in the in the definition of form. Then it goes it goes to infinity, right? And uh, if we plan to perform uh, a matrix element, then uh, we. Medical ailments. <laughs> it's a small one. It's a fractured uh, growth plate in one of my knuckles right here. Oh. I don't, so you probably can't see it. Oh, it's shorter? No, it just doesn't have the same mobility. Oh, okay. here's a little bit uh, different way uh, of visualizing it. So uh, it um, it follows the product of the of the functions uh, uh, when we are away 
from the diagonal line, and when we are on the diagonal line, it is substantially magnified and then goes to infinity. So uh, the expectation value would go just from making an integral of all these elements, and if you have discontinuity, it will go to uh, the It will go to 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 to, to infinity. When we will try to uh, no, compute the matrix element, then it gives uh, not a number. So. Uh, one divided by zero is like either infinity or not a number, but it is the same thing. So it is something bad. And uh, if you take this asymmetric, think. Why do you have some unfulfilled herba training there? Yeah, but I only work in the research lab. I'm not taking care of students' grades. Oh, I don't know. Did you do the stuff on Blackboard? So uh, here, the... Yeah. Diagonal line is brought to zero uh, because the product of these two functions is zero. And then when we perform the uh, summation, then the results will be uh, final value. So any questions, objections? Objections? No objections. Objections, you believe in everything objects. was told? Um, right now, I promise there will be no homework, but can you help me designing homework based on this subject for as, as your little hello to next year students? Make them uh, uh, certainly try. Make them memorize it no. and then rewrite it. The and then draw year. it from memory. <laughs> yeah. No. Memorization is, is like. Um, like besides just taking screenshots of the graphs. Yeah, something something creative that will pitch uh, if they got uh, the Slater determinant concept really really well or not really well or really not well. I have a little challenge designing a homework like this. Yeah, that's kind of hard. But um, let's try maybe for an extra credit. Be a co author of the next year class. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, going to what? Let's try to see how the uh, next code is working. The weirdest question you've ever gotten asked on the tour, Ava. So, did you go to the first uh, image with Gaussian function? Oh, I haven't done that. Did you? And uh, let's try to type, to type clear before uh, running it if you're doing it in the same environment so that it doesn't inherit very evils from the previous uh, oh. um, I got the first uh, yeah. otherwise just like personal questions uh oh it's working give me a second 
Mine doesn't like the car. You didn't find, you didn't take. Oh, you're so right. Did you mean clear? Yeah. Yes, I mean clear. Oh. Did you download the phone? Yeah. I'll try this one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, well, it's moving. It does. Oh, like you were impressed. <laughs> yeah, I do, well, I deleted the brackets out of the number. That's it. Yeah. It, the rest was fine. Mm -hmm. Super any. But just show the figure. Okay. <clears throat> no, this, this is the code number one, which we are basically done. Okay. So uh, we're still moving on. Our friend has raised me. Try and press like space a couple times or enter. It travels. It travels. Oh, it's it travels. I'm getting on an airplane tomorrow. Where are you going? I'm going to Texas. Again? It travels. Oh yeah. my God. Are you going to get back? You got some freaking cool. Congratulations. On what? What did you say? I, <laughs> no, I just didn't hear what you said. Oh man, that's crazy. What? No, it's a lot of airfare, you know. Are you going, are you going forever or you're returning? Oh, oh, all this other stuff pops up. Sunday. Okay. I will be in class on Friday, but I'll be back on Friday. Sorry. Okay. No, 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 that's good. I'm, I'm so, I'm so okay. You're not, not forever. forever, yeah. You meet you just on Friday. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't take clear because uh, um, you need to just go back to it and watch. Yeah, and then it moves. It's not moving. Yeah, yeah it, well, it's scooching down. Oh yeah, it it's is. It's <laughs> scooching down. I got all the oh, no, the and then this, yeah. and then this probability over what time. time. If I hand yes. it again. So uh, what about this? Uh, how do you call it? Scooching. Yeah, it's scooching. So, can you explain a little bit more? Yeah, it's um... in in the context of, of this class. Do you see any connections to what you had before? I mean, we definitely see things like increase and decrease, um, which I, I assume like keeps the same. So area um, in the what in the but this is a, it's not that like two like with the camels oh there's three like the, no it is it's it's like four the camels camel. so which which uh, oh, which models oh. which models did we consider in this class like real models like we, we, you consider this model can be uh, this uh, course can be called uh, plane waves. Yes, yes, yes. yes. This call can, can can be called uh, thousand theories and couple of applications. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Or, or like <laughs> by thousand and one night, like thousand theories and one application. <laughs> so uh, by now we, we've got only two applications, right? Right. So which of them uh, looks very similar to what you see on the screen by this question? Oh, just name which two applications did you consider in this class? The yeah, which two? Uh, let's ask Melody because uh, she, she has a fr up. fresh eye. Okay. Um, which two applications did we consider in this class? What application? This is the class of a thousand theories and two what applications. applications. <laughs> what are are what are the two op applications of what we learn to the world? Um. Um, well, is it like the the velocity of a particle in a box? I was thinking like like because one of the big things we talked about well, is like the Schrodinger equation. So it's so it's like like probabilities of like things happening. No one of you is wrong. Oh yes, but <laughs> not really entirely correct. <laughs> but uh, mm, what was the okay? Let's scroll back. It's a what, lot of predicting. Yes, but you guys are so theoretical. I maybe maybe it's my fault that I taught you too well. Why did you teach us too well? Uh, mm, what is the last application we can see? Like in application model, like what was the last thing we covered by different series? Density of states. I'm racking my brain really hard, yeah, and I cannot talk about recently. Pizza box, 
I told I told you too well. Uh, you need to well, there's broader, a broader application. So let's let's go slightly uh, with a simple way. Okay. Um if we are in a wet lab, yeah, we do have two rings of chemistry, synthesis and characterization. Yes. So by synthesis, we explore different samples, different molecules, and by characterization, we have different ways to pick their different features. Uh, this class is one even can say it is mostly theory or computation, right? But uh, the theories are characterization tools. Like density of state is one of the observables, one of the characterization tools, or this uh, camel humps uh, is also characterization. And the analog of molecules, applications or models, are, I don't know how to explain it, which two models, which two applications did we consider? Yes, it was the last one. And what was the first one? What was the last one? Particle in the box. Oh, okay. Particle in the box is, is application number two and application number one. One was particle. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Patricia got. Plus one, Patricia, plus one, Ava. Right. Yeah. C plus one, A plus one. <laughs> Perfect. So, now, uh, when we run this code, when we run this code, which model, which application does it uh, look more, look closer to particle in the box or to the electron in the free space? Electron in the free space. Yeah. Yes. So what 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 did you learn by investing almost a month of our time in boring equations? What did you learn about particle in the free space? Now I want to really to check how no exams, no quizzes. I just just try getting feedback to assess my instruction. So what did you learn during the like first month? What did you learn about particle in the free space? Learn. It's moving. It's moving. Yes, I have a magic way to facilitate facilitate the discussion. So, particle in the free space keeps moving. Yes. <laughs> you said? I said that. Okay. Um, does it change its uh, momentum? Not unless there's a force acting on it. No. And if sir, always yes. <laughs> Oh, the momentum is conserved perfect so if if the if the particle is in the free space it means there are no forces right okay what else did you study about particle in the free space it's energy states yes what else uh if i if I would try to run every morning and go to gym every evening, I will be skinny. <laughs> if I stop it, I will gain weight. Could it be? Could it be? Oh no! Any forces in that that might act on it? No forces. But what about skinny or not skinny? What about shape? What about width? What about and, and uh, yeah, oh, okay. If if you like height more, what what about height? The height of what? Okay, let, let me uh, um, walk and uh, design more more questions. But um, I hope it will be fun and better than we just boring the look stare into into the course. I'm having fun. Okay. So. Is it not working? Oh, it's like the same color, but it's just like you need, you need to type queer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then mixes the variables. Uh -huh. That's smart. I actually didn't have to do that. Um, oh, that was yeah. And then if you keep going, it will start moving. Yeah. Go back. 
So, uh, 10 things are, are boring. Let's uh, discuss what is Kuchin Java. So, Melody, just let me take an interview. What do we see? Um, it's two peaks and they're slowly getting wider and wider. <laughs> wider and wider. Okay, let's make connection to the class material. What is getting wider and wider in our class? The probability distribution. <laughs> The probability distribution. Yes, exactly. The probability distribution of whom? Or of what? The particle? In which space? Free space? Yes. So how did we how did we prove it? I think it was one of the of the of the ugly, heavy, uh, hateful uh, homework. Do you remember it? Or you, you do you remember homeworks that you hate at most? The last one. The last one I hated. So, okay. And the second uh, by the scale? Second oh, hardest was? The second one, might, yeah, maybe. Oh, you, you. The art, the MATLAB ones are the hardest. But do you remember approximately what they were about? Um, are you clicking? Yeah. Okay. The quantum cookbook. Oh, that one? With, that the, one? with the time dependent Schrodinger equation? Mm -hmm. Not sure. Okay. Well, I'm I'm demanding how a quantum system over time like the yes, yes. When we were transferring to the by Fourier transform to the momentum space and then backwards to the coordinate space. Yeah. Yes? I think so. Okay. Uh Sam, are you in a good mood to talk about the class? Okay. Um so the probability distribution right of the particle in the free space gets wider and we spent a lot of time by getting to this conclusion and now by running this code you do see that it happens right so it's an illustration of the uh, particle in the free, free space so if i typed like easy and uh ever described it as squishing down mm -hmm. so two lines because they are computed by different methods but basically it's the uh, predicting the same um, thing probability distribution what about the center of the wave packet is it staying in the same place or it is it moves somewhere it is moving so, so at, originally it is centered at about 30 whatever units are and at the end is at about 40 right so there are two trends one is uh, center is moving according to newton's first law or whatever we predict expectation value moving forward and uh, the distribution becomes wider and wider right so if you thought that we are done with particle in the free space you were wrong <laughs> this particle visits us again. Uh, the code as, as it is written is also spits out the video that one can upload to YouTube and share for, for this thing how it is squishing down. So if one looks into the uh, directory, one, like OS, it will show this uh, AVI file and it can be uploaded to YouTube and it will show if you play the sync a little bit quicker. Now, uh, mm, let's look what does it spit out in addition to this uh, little movie. Uh, this is boring. Oh, okay. This is a good thing. Um, please try the uh, find the second last second last. And let's interpret what is this color map? It's an infrared picture of a candle. I like it. I like it. That's exactly what I am. I think you guys were offering me to become a partner in business. Yeah. 
Yeah. We can design uh, physical chemistry wallpapers. Yeah. For screens and for uh, for houses. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Accept. <laughs> what, what is the connection between the thing on the bottom? Yeah, it's like chemistry glass frames. Uh, think at the bottom and the um, how ever described it, squishing down movie. Yeah. It's time for a little interview. I'll, I'll start from, from, from the other side. So, Patricia, do you see a, like box with two Gaussians and you see um, a b blue box? What is the connection between them? The, um, yeah, the dorsal fin? Is that the dorsal? I think so. Sun, what's the back yeah. of the sun? Is it the dorsal fin? What are the other two? Yeah. Uh, Between this and that? Yes, on the top and the bottom. Hmm. I feel like it's starting to connect. The rays. <laughs> the big dorsal fin. Um, sure. The colors. My choose. Oh, okay. Uh, the colors. We have... Um, green, we have green there. Okay. <laughs> These ones. Okay, it's something. Uh, uh, well, if you look at the kind of like, I don't know, thermal looking uh, graph, it is kind of the same shape, you know, there's like one area of like higher probability. Everything else around it is like that. So just try to um, move uh, this blue figure around so you, you see it from different angles. Oh, so is this just like it's like a shark fin? Is this just like the same graph just in three dimensions? Yes. Kind of? Okay. So who wants to disagree with Fred? I always. I didn't hear what he said. Huh? He's too soft spoken. Yeah, but be loud. Yeah, he's talking into the microphone. Take the microphone and speak louder so that they. The blue graph that looks like a thermal image is the same graph as like. The one above it, just in three dimensions. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at. So we're looking at the graph like this. Exactly. Exactly. Can you? Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes, but can you describe it by words? Because it is the major task of physical chemistry and maybe science at all is to convert formulas into images and images into words. Oh. Melody wants to do it. Okay. She, she wants to save you. I to pose a question. I don't know the answer to your question. Yes. But if this middle you're debating subject. So okay. You. Is Fred saying that this is the same as this graph or this graph? It looks like neither one. As this one. Oh, as the one on that one, the middle one. What? The, the, green, the green and red one. Yeah. The, the yeah. infrared one is well, the same. Well, maybe it's not at like the same like, in it's time like or whatever. Yeah, but... just by just looking through the shoulder, that uh, Elsa caught this concept. What and is, what is it upside down? She, she 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 just uh, has a challenge to express it by words. Yeah. Keep trying. <laughs> and so the infrared looking image is the same as the green and red one, but we're looking at the infrared image. Like above almost. So in on the screen, we're looking at it from above, but we're looking at it from like one of the sides. And it's like an upside down parabola with the yellow being the top of the upside down parabola. And then it goes from yellow to green to blue. I, I, I got. I, I'm perfectly uh, happy. Now let's interview Eva uh, and check if she yeah, wants to agree or disagree with Elsa. Um, I agree with Elsa. Uh, can you repeat what she told them? <laughs> um, we're looking the um, 
like position over time kind of thermal as fred said uh, picture I, is i don't i don't think that it's your yellow is going to be the top i think your yellow is the bottom you can see it like this if you move it around have that on the screen well, well if, I think you know, if you move it around, like the one on that big screen is from above. The low is because if you look at like the side view, I'm just kind of going off of the values, but the yellow like mark kind of lines up with where the like lower peaks where the zero's at on the like upside down parabola. Uh, so you are. Uh, so smart that you can analyze even without running the code, just looking on on the screen. But uh, can you run it? I tried it. So there's a lot of errors. Uh, let's Control C. Go, go to Control C. Uh, type in the command line. Type clear in the command line. Clear. Okay. And now let's go back to the script and just maybe win. And then press any key. I used to. I used to volunteer there, but this semester I'm way too busy. And the only thing I'm going to do this semester is to tour on Saturdays. So, what are your images? Let's have a put in side by side and on the side the think this this images. I know. Like I would do it in the morning. Yes. Okay. Press any key. No, no, so we will probably do anything. Yeah, we're on Saturday. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it's the same. Well, um, yeah, I think it's the same from. I think it's the same from after trying to manipulate the this, <laughs> to manipulate this, I think it's the same. It still gives this and it's this shape. And I noticed that it also spreads out. Okay. Uh, uh, Patricia found a good verbal formula spreads out. Spreads out, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's like a, That's a, a piece of cream cheese spreads <laughs> out. Exactly. <laughs> okay. We, we should we should get ready and teach uh, physical chemistry into kindergarten with, uh, with demonstrations. It could be like play or something. Push it down. Okay, but um, who, I, I don't know why, why you call it thermo. First, first you describe this image as a candle light. Yeah. And then, and then by by some reason you you did call it thermo, right? I also said thermo. Yeah, it just. Happened. Looks like it. Yeah. yeah Same like color the scheme. Red, well, the, the like the yellow red areas like just represent areas of higher intensity. Yeah. Like the peak yeah. on the yeah. Curve. Yeah. So the orange is like the flame of the candle, and then the rest yeah. is like the heat. That... So uh can we yeah. Im like imagine a line coming through the area of maximal heat as you describe it? Mm -hmm. Yes. We would be going straight up or no. slanted a little to the right. It's a little bit like this. Right okay. Right. Okay. So a little bit like this. Slanted towards from left to the right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um what about so x axis is position. You agree? Mm -hmm. And on the top image, x axis is also position. They even share the same scale from zero to hundred. What about y? Uh, axis in the blue image. Here, you know. That one. What is why? Time. Time. Yeah. And what was time in our? Uh, you. Some of you called Gaussian function as inverted parabola, which is not not, not very wrong. It's a little wrong. Let's see, I'm or just, just, just things, it works. Oh, I don't know. Who's wrong? Uh, Who's wrong? Oh, just tell anything. I mean, upside down parabola is technically incorrect. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's just the, the x squared is on the wrong part. Uh, if, if you plot the x minus x something. 
Second name of our course, or third, uh, second name is Thousand Theories and Two Applications. Yeah. Third and name is uh, down Nobel Prizes in Physics and Chemistry. <laughs> so, did any of you heard about Marcus' theory of electron transfer? Um, it sounds vaguely familiar, but I don't know if I can state it. Okay, just let's vote. Who just heard, vaguely heard something about Marcus' theory of electron transfer? Marcus. Marcus. Uh -huh. Sorry. I, might, I, might I have to say it like that. Two and a half. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, um, went from castle to the yacht and got a salmon. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> so um, this guy wrote his paper in 1956 good uh, price in about 90, 1990s, but uh, he predicts how the rate of uh, electron transfer from like donor to acceptor molecule depends on what? Oh, it doesn't say. On the, on the energy of set. Like if we have one molecule uh, with electron on level with one energy with certain energy and accepting empty orbital uh, another energy, and then we, um, oh, by changing molecule or by changing solvent, we can mutually tune these energy levels. And he predicted, like more than half century ago, that rate of electron transfer between these two levels located in different molecules depends just on the offset of these energies. And the quickest transfer will be not when they're equal in energy, but when they have a special uh, offset. One of the possible projects in uh, this mini, mini research will be related to Marcus' theory, but the way how uh, this theory was derived and then compared to experiment related to floating Gaussian function in a logarithmic scale. So if you take log of x of minus x squared, the x will disappear and you will have just inverted parabola. So whoever told was, it was not you just you are thinking in the log scale yeah you just which is cool <laughs> okay uh, returning back to melody back to the subject <laughs> so um what about where is the time in the top figure does does the top figure show any time uh, so it's it's a video and so slowly the distribution gets wider and wider and that's time i'm absolutely perfectly agreeing with melody and just want to hear uh please raise your hands if you absolutely agree with melody oh, which part is time Time is which part of this the squishing this the widening? So it's it it is that it is like it is the fact that it's wide. Yeah, it widening is happening as a evolution of time. Oh. Yeah, like the time is the x-axis. No, x-axis is Hmm. Um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Fred to say his thing. In the beginning, when the first graph is, has a narrow peak and a high peak, uh -huh. it's just the same as in the the blue thermalish image, where the most intense like white area that represents the um, more narrow peak, and then as you move up, I guess with time on that blue image it spreads out and the center of the peak shifts to a higher position and it widens out it's like just yeah so like the the i guess the movie is just you're moving up on that blue graph on the screen you know moving up yes uh so um Oh, so you're just like you're just moving down the graph. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, as time goes on, 
the, the changes. Let's say that the last one represents. Uh, uh, yet wants to object uh, the theory of melody and Fred. I don't you do? Know. The, the Johnson Vanier theory. Who wants to request more detailed proof of their theorem? Like if you if you if you disagree or or you're not confident, other questions to them. Okay, then you can repeat what their theorem, right? Just the y axis. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just, I just don't yeah. access on the blue. Yes, I, I agree. Sometimes, like just. I think he has answered the question. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, Say your last name, Ron. No, you no, said you, you didn't. When I can compete I with the. Uh, you say it. I say veneer, but like yeah. when I'm feeling, you know, in the mood, I'm like, oh, I'm, my name's Frederick Benier, you know. Like, <laughs> it sounds cool. So uh, uh, you guys explain it much better than I ever could, but let, let me just repeat so that we have something. In summary, and I'm not going to uh, uh, take your glory. You you are designer of this theory and explanation. Whoa! I need more coffee to be more <laughs> alert. So, the movie was showing the probability distribution of electron in the free space with non-zero momentum going from left to the right, changing its expectation value position and changing the uh, width of this distribution. The movie is a collection of a snapshots, right? Um, and movie, especially three-dimensional, is designed to represent what we cannot see on a single image. But if our dynamics happens only in one dimension, we can add another dimension and um, make a representation of a moving movie on a single image, right? So if you take snapshots of this movie and combine them together, they will form the blue image. So the blue image represents the same dynamics of the particle in the free space as this moving movie. The uh, center of this colored area will, would be expectation value of the position of the particle. And the width of the colored area will be width of the of the probability distribution. If we uh, use this rotation two, as, as you probably did, you see that this is narrow Gaussian at the beginning, right, and broad Gaussian at the end, right. I do not know how to how to do it better than you guys did. I just uh, illustrated. Now, what are these two lines? How are they labeled? Yeah. So your favorite letter sigma means what? I forgot. I don't know. You, you don't need to give us history of ancient Greece and how this uh, letter was developed. What just what what does it mean? I know it's okay. Here's everything that I can remember about sigma right now. I know it goes under a square root, so it's square root of sigma times pi. Um, the normalization factor. Yeah. So. Does it go into the denominator of Gaussian function, like uh, x minus x naught squared divided by sigma, in the power of this x? think so. Okay, good. But this is our initial setup, how we prepare our Gaussian wave function. Now, um, do you remember anything about uncertainty relation? Remember something? Remember nothing? Heard about it, but I don't care. Instructor taught us bad. <laughs> that's the, I don't care. No, that's the, I don't know. Okay. It's like I had a worst instructor. I have no memories about the content of the course. So what what do you specifically do not like about uncertainty relation? I just don't know what it is. <laughs> I 
can attest and prove your presence at the meeting when we discussed it. I don't remember what it is. It's okay. I, I don't remember what. what uh, principle. Yes. That's when, like, you can't, you can't uh, know both the momentum and the. Uh, well, that's the position. thing Sam knows. That's Sam. Yeah, Sam knew it even without this course. He told it at the very first beginning, and I thought like he should be given A and let walk away from the class. It was like you can't know no, that you can't know the position and the. Yeah, it's a lot of you can't know position and momentum. I knew you knew it. Yeah. I just didn't know that that's what it was called. Uncertainty. Because we cannot know means our knowledge is uncertain. Right. That makes sense. Okay. I, I have uncertainty about everything, but I know that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now let me formulate an, another question for our fun discussion. You all were absolutely correct about the position and momentum can be merged at the same time. But uh, this is qualitative assessment. Now, how can we go to quantitative? What is the like ex mathematical expression? Well, what is uh, the measure? Before, um, huh? So I've seen the like, then it might have been simplified equation. Um, it's just, it's like, it's for years ago, it's What's the mathematical equation for the uncertainty? It's, I know there's an absolute value in it. Okay. I know that there's an absolute value in that. <laughs> the, 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 it was index finger to point attention, right? Uh, okay, yes. good. I, I was just uh, checking that. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's your change in position times your chain or uncertainty in position times your uncertainty of momentum has to be greater than or equal to your uh, Planck's constant over four pi. Uh, everyone, everyone agrees or disagrees with uh, Sam? Agrees. Agrees. Did you hear what he told? Or you you blindly agree because you trust him? <laughs> I don't know, Sam. <laughs> he said that he found something. Did he found something actual? Well, um. First, I want everyone to agree to remember and agree what you found. Uh, and second, can you pretty please repeat yourself? Oh, it's your uncertainty and momentum times your uncertainty in position is greater than or equal to your Planck's constant over four pi. That's what yeah, delta delta x is momentum, delta p is position. Okay, now uh, a little bridge, a little bridging, a little bridging. <laughs> Uh, Sam and the uh, authors of the material that he is reading like symbol delta. Yes. Yeah. Myself and authors whom I'm I'm reading uh, like another crazy Greek letter sigma. So would you agree that sigma and delta means the same in this context? Yes. 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 We. Yeah. This is sigma. Yeah. The one that's on here. This. Okay. So, 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 I don't know my Greek letters. I, um, I should because I'm calculus, but I don't. I should make a prerequisite for physical chemistry first. When you to take one year of ancient Greek. Well, okay. <laughs> Am I going to get There's also mics in the <laughs> ceiling? I'll just I'll do what we do to the new members of the room and get them and raise the help. Am I going to get a mic? Is the alphabet? That's not the students. There is some preferred to do that. Like, kind of asking. How many letters are going to help? Oh, about, about, about 50%. Yeah. 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 Uh, How many characters are in the Russian alphabet? I just asked that. Oh, I said about 50% more. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. Oh, that's okay. There, okay, we are going off topic. Um, <laughs> I need this. Do, do, do you know uh, why uh, the Russian alphabet is called Cyrillic? No. Who, who, who was the Cyril or Kirill? 
Yes. Or like, like a group of people? Or no, it's, it's, a person. it's a person. So it was a Greek uh, monk who decided to go to a mission to the tribes that do not speak Greek. And he learned their language and then tried to accommodate Greek alphabet to uh, and translate scriptures. And he found out that there are some sounds that are not present in Greek. And then he designed uh, like additional 50% of symbols. Which, really which is like for some whistling sounds like well, okay uh what melody would tell back to the subject guys. Yeah, back to the subject if if everyone admits that delta and sigma are the same in the context of this class i think so and uh the uh the little thing here is labeled like sigma x what oh, I was not focusing camera on you guys. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, and Pi, I know that one too. Isn't that a creepy? So, um, what, what what can you say about the top image? Um, it looks kind of like a, like a x squared, like one half of it, but it's it's like really wide. That's a it's like an e to the power of something graph isn't that what that looks like i can't i can't i understand let's check it was this thing because i that was me just how it looks okay oh it never goes to zero it never goes to zero approaches but does not reach yes you guys are mathematically correct but uh what is the connection between the mathematical function labeled as sigma sub x as function of time and the image that was words. what were words what was what it was down squishing. yeah squishing down <laughs> squishing well it's the, if it's the particle in the free space it doesn't if it's a particle in the free space it doesn't stop moving Yes. Unless something is acted upon it, but if nothing's acted upon it, it just keeps moving. Yes, but if you're looking on the, well, that would be a straight line. Uh, we are looking not a not the expectation value of position. We look on the uncertainty. We look on the width. Well, if sigma Six is in the denominator of that Gaussian, like you said before, Wait. it would. Oh, oh, well, is, is this a, a Gaussian yes. like curve? Okay, so then as as sigma increases with time, the height is gonna get is gonna get smaller, but the area underneath it is gonna stay the same, so it's gonna get wider with time, just like it does. In, like, I'm very happy with uh, with how Fred expressed the um, things that are going on. Anyone wants to anyone to object Fred or request more more from him? No? Which means everyone can repeat what he told. Uh, <laughs> so Melody wants to try. Uh, why do I have to go first? Make Sam go first. Yeah, the boy, you have to function yes yeah, um the area on the needs that's the um uncertainty in position changes every time but because the area body area remains the same so uh let me comment to avoid ambiguities i have a question fred just a second i uh, i think Statement uh, may have already brought some uh, ambiguities, and I want to resolve them before we go forward. Right. You don't want to let that grow up or shape it again, but you're at the same spot. Ah, wrong one. Wrong one. Right, so, and focus here. Oh, do you guys know what they so, uh, Sam was telling the following. He told that width, as, as movie goes on, the width of this distribution becomes bigger, but the area under the curve stays the same. Uh, right? And Sam was practicing uh, analytical thinking based on our in-class problems, which 
if we ever remember what happened in um, in our class and homework, we noticed that the shape will be Gaussian and we found an equation for the width, for the denominator of the Gaussian, which increases quadratically, right? And then Sam tells uh, the following statement. If the width increases quadratically, if the denominator of Gaussian increases quadratically, then the Gaussian function becomes broader and broader. Yes, we all agree. Now, the biggest surprise discovery and potential for a bright future. Is there an experiment where you can like show this because you can take like a piece of paper in front of like a projector and as it gets closer and closer it narrows, but then at some point it starts to like widen again? Yes, uh, you are ready to teach this class with demonstrations. <laughs> so um, everything goes good, no no objections, but I, I want to invert your mindset, starting from Fred. <laughs> so I hope I intrigued you sufficiently. In the class, we were behaving like uh, advanced uh, theorists, right? We derived everything and then just analyzed the uh, outcome, eventually plotting it. Here, this code that we, we, we had a lot of fun discussing the outcomes, but we didn't look how it works. And maybe you were presuming that this code just predicts how the weeds increase and plotted this function. Maybe. Maybe you didn't ask this question to yourself. But this code is universal. It is numerical rather than analytical. And instead of deriving equations for width or for expectation value of, of the uh, position, it does dramatically general, universal approach. So it treats explicitly only the wave function. So when we are running the code, when the movie is, is plotted, we know nothing about expectation value of position or the width. When the movie is done, there is a unit that takes this distribution and converts it into some observables, right? Before we were so weak, constrained, and we were able to work only with, uh, just a second, I, I finished the sentence, sorry. We, we were able to work only in a free space and particularly in the box. Now. As, as we go through this code, it is universal. It will work for any one dimensional potential. So right now we, uh, we started testing this code for potential equals zero because you intuitively and based on the class material, you know the expected outcome. But by changing only one line in the code, one can model anything that it can be modeled with one dimensional potential. And it is basically a path a way to our uh, projects. Uh, Melody wanted to ask or comment something. I was gonna. I was gonna ask if that if this code was universal, if we could use it to run experiments for things that are not like the particle in free space. Which... Exactly. This is the main point of the whole class. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, in some sense. This, well, this is not absolute truth for all questions, but it is quite universal too, that you can use even if uh, ideas evaporate and disappear. With this tool, you can model a lot of things and build, even build your lifelong scientific career on it. So just by designing potential, modeling different uh, processes, it will be either a good standalone research and paper or a good complement to uh, experimental research. So uh, I'm not joking. I, uh, there are examples of, of this. And later, as we go, I, I can share. So uh, we will, right now, we will have only a uh, limited, humble goal of uh, getting through class and completing projects as a replacement of an exam. But in fact, it opens wide road for even with one dimensional wave packet dynamics based research career that you can just excel in profession.
Okay, so introduction is done. Now we need to get more to bells and whistles. I know that uh, you are running out of energy. It's it's getting dark outside. <laughs> but um, and we will have more meetings on this code before you present how it works and uh, uh, before we get to projects. But let's briefly start on some aspects of how the code is working. So please uh, accumulate your dedication and passions because it will be a little less fun, more concentration. We will look on only on boring lines of code instead of funny pictures, but we will slowly build up a background for your for your projects, for the like midterm three and for final projects. Okay. So, in um, the things that we discussed by now are. Um, three types of observables, right? So it is what comes out of the of the modern. So this uh, snapshots combined in the in the image, a movie, and expectation value of position <coughs> and uncertainty of position. And and the second line, I will not focus long, but it shows straight line. The position goes from thirty to fifty, which just shows how center of the weight packet moves, right? Okay, now we are getting to the to the code. What is code? Yes. Here. So uh, I took the version of the code that was already commented, and uh, by not removing codes, I um, erased my own opportunity to give you a task. Of writing comments to each line, but I think you'll forgive me this. Okay. Um, so total number of lines is is about three hundred fifty, right? So it would take a little long to write a comment about each time, and um, let's maybe. I don't know, maybe I, I will look crazy, but let's look uh, on the code from the bottom, from the end, because then we'll have the answer, the observables, and then we'll know what to, what to look for. So, um, support 311, time variances. Okay, so let's just try uh, this little. So, I'm copy pasting the. Lines three eleven to three thirteen. Control C. Going to command window, typing figure, and then copy pasting these lines. So I'm getting this uh, uncertainty, and we see that it is um, uh, saved in the variables, vary answers. So if I need uncertainty, I need to scroll through for the variable named variance. Uh, okay. Another little observation before we, we go forward. I, now I look for the lines uh, 316, 318. I copy them. I'll go to the command window, type uh, figure, and copy paste this lines. So it shows the straight lines. So I can guess that variable time increases includes all time steps, and the variable AVGS and AVGS3 includes computed expectation value of, of the position. So at least I have some navigation what to look in the code. So I can catch where they are defined. What else do I want to catch? Um, Maybe uh, let's try the Ooh, line 341. Control C, uh, opening new figure and pasting 
So this is the thing that you uh, we discussed at most, and that uh, you um, know what 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 it what it means, right? So did you get it? Were you able to put this? Okay, and um, so it is saved in the variable S three. So I can write on the board when I'm oh. studying this code. So um, yes, so we is how would I call this map of probability distribution? ABGS ABGS S three expectation value of position. And the answer is uncertainty of position width of the wave pattern. <laughs> so one of the ways to explore um, I have an idea I fear that this consideration can be really boring and therefore it's um, I'm always worried uh, worried or bored you said oh you said boring yes Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry from my side that it is boring. Let's let's uh, formulate it as, as a little quest, little task. So uh, please find in which lines the three variables are defined, and then uh, I will go look at your screens and make a little interview. Okay, which variables are we talking about? S three, S three, averages, um, averages no. three. No. Variances. Uh huh. Oh, geez. Out of these, like hundreds. Yeah. And uh, you know that you do not need to scroll and read every line. You can do whatever. Uh, yeah. Variances. Search. Variances. Right. Averages. Did I spell variances? Variances. Averages three. Average. Variance. That's three. From three prime. So, um, I have looked through the shoulder. Oh, three. Um, okay, Melody tells average three equals probe three. And Sam, okay, what, what, what uh, on your. Uh, we have, I have that as well, but there's also average of S3 yeah. equals average of S3 with colon of average of, and that much. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sam corrected uh, his error before I caught him. Mm, the the variable is redefined at least twice. Once at the very beginning, where when it is declared, and uh, somewhere closer to the end of the code when it is act actually populated. So, how do we arrange it? Let's take volunteers. Not volunteers. Volunteers is. I will assign <laughs> to go to the blackboard, write the num the line of the code, and maybe reproduce the line of the code on the on the board approximately. Right? So Fred, I'm going to, you will be the pioneer. All right. Well, I have a question first. No, you should have an answer. Here's the first time it shows up. And every time it shows up, it, there's no like number of functions. Like it's either empty brackets okay. or it's some. Which one? To variances. Okay, so try to um, let's go to the board and write it down. Okay. Isn't that? It's just to like say that you have this variable, but you're not defining it yet. Right. Yes and no. Um, we, Let's discuss it on, on the board. Otherwise, it will be quite boring uh, or not absorbable. Absorbable. Huh? 
Oh, I wish I could write that tall so easily. I'm going to head tilt because he has brain infection, so he has a head tilt. And he's so cute. He's like me. Is at her sister's place, so she does not have active right now. <laughs> Semicolon. Uh -huh. That's a line. What about line 161? One thing at a time. Let's, let's look on uh, what Fred uh, did. So, what's the difference between two things uh, from the left and right of the semicolon? Do you see, is it the same variable or slightly different? No, no, no. Oh, you, you. Good, oh, good. Good, good, good. Same variables. Good enough for me. But if we do not, we can go into line two thirteen and see what what is written there. Very good. Uh, please, please do not leave. I'm going to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't leave, Fred. Please don't. Leave. <laughs> please don't leave. <laughs> Well, so we just have to define S to be something, right? What is that for? Computer is being updated in its uh, order. God, that paper is like a. So, um, a little task about your knowledge of MATLAB. If I type uh, this uh, command, it will define a row vector of two elements. Okay. Now, if I will write down this line, what would be the result? Can you answer it without? No, 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 no. Oh. What, what will be the size of the vector? Oh. No, no, no. It will add, we, we can do it different way. Like uh, if you want columns one, two, and then next line x equals x, and then in the next line three. So this mm, syntax of MATLAB increases the length of. Of the vector, right? Okay. So you take what it was before and add one one element more, right? Do you agree? Uh, I don't see how these two are different. Me too. They're the same. Oh, okay. So one and two. So how does how are you adding? How are you making it bigger? Like if you uh, like array equals to itself and then one more element it means length of the vector length of array becomes bigger if you do traditional old-fashioned uh, programming languages it, it's barely possible in matlab it, it's a little easier are those in the, the x equals x3 are those i's or are those semicolons semicolon okay it's semicolon same as in what uh Fred wrote here and oh, what yeah. you can read in line 213. Okay. So this should be um, interpreted as array AVGS will be equal to array AVGS with one more element AVG3. Okay. And then it rolls back that before we can analyze what, what it is, we need to find another line that define AVG without S. So there is a letter S here. Okay, uh, any questions to Fred? Thanks. Your watch is over. So now please find the line of code with, uh, that defines AVG3. Patricia, are you ready? Oh, I have it. Cool, cool. Cool. Try to memorize it and reproduce it on, on the board. So give the line of the code and the approximate content of this line. Oh, I need to look again. Yeah, it's many things. <laughs> yeah, are you doing all three or just the first? I'm just gonna do the A B G three. Yeah. Which is written. I'll mouth it to you. <laughs> Okay. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's it's an, a very important step. I'm proud of Melody and everyone who helped her. And now let's take an even harder challenge. Let, let me bring it maybe on the on the screen. So um, the the question I'm going to ask is so hard that if you uh, fail and not answer on or answer in part, it will be not against you. Okay. Just by attempting, you already make an heroic feat. By the way, what line of the of the code? Of the I don't know what it's called, but it's like a yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now oh, I should have asked a joke. Uh, the pr primary task to Melody, but everyone try to solve it on, on the pain, 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 um, pen and paper. Pen. This is a pen and paper deal? Yeah. So please try uh, uh, physical chemists as uh, linguistics translators, <laughs> translating from math to codes to exp to figures to words. Now we have codes and we need to translate it in math language. So um, based on our knowledge in the class, which mathematical expression does it correspond to? And uh, as a little uh, hint, it's a little longer than one symbol. As a little hint, it uh, it corresponds to postulate number five. If total number of postulates is six, that whoever was did five, Fred or Elsa? I think I did. Cause, well, I sort of did. Fred. Uh, I think she did. I did. She did. Wow. So, <laughs> so we're translating what matters. So let's uh, um what is which variable in standard mathematical equations uh AVG stands for? Average. Average of what? Uh three. Oh, wait. So, just just calm down average of which observable position yes which letter of roman or english alphabet is typically used for position x which brackets are typically used to symbolize average brackets which which brackets or um i can't Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's write down the symbol for just not the answer, but the symbol. Expectation value of X. Okay, so we need to write down an expression for this expectation value of X. And uh, let's assume that we already know the wave function. So if you do know wave function, how to get an expectation value of observable? Um, keep going, keep going. Don't, suppose we know wave function and we don't care, uh, we, we postpone for the future its explicit value. So, so, how to extract expectation value of position from knowledge of the wave function? Is this when you, when you put this inside the bracket? So it's like. Uh -huh. And this is Dirac notation, but we can expand it in more algebraic in form of an integral of something. Integral uh, of like size times a start. Oh, well, we, we can skip the limits for the future. Maybe from minus infinity to plus infinity. Yes. <laughs> Just like some of the most mid. So, if anyone has an answer or hypothetical answer, please give me a little signs so that I. Double mid. That is big. <laughs> and feel free to help me. Oh, we're gonna bring it. Oh, look at this. Really? I remember having this. 
It, it's good. It's good. It's like normalization. Today. I, I, I think right, Brian. I'm kind of blocked. This one. It's inverted. But I think on recordings, it will be normal. You're hiding. <laughs> <laughs> we all will be ready to teach quantum chemistry at kindergarten. Yeah. Hide and, hide and find yeah. variable. So you like equals, equals, and then wave functions and um, just give me a little. Uh, any, anyone has an idea what it should be? Approximate. <laughs> The only yeah. integral thing that I remember is the integral of like the star psi times like the a. Uh, uh, is that correct? Times the other times regular psi. Uh huh. Yes. So let me write psi. And then we a. The capital A. Capital A. Does it have the hat? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then five star. Perfect. So this would be expectation yeah. value of because of what? The so position. Just, just, so this will be expectation value of operator A. Uh, now uh um uh, Eva is vice coach. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you got seven on the other side. So you oh, the well, well, it is the future champion. So now replace A with variable that corresponds to position. Okay. Expectation value of X. Yes. Does it need to be x hat? Or just x, x hat? x, without x. Okay. Yeah. So you both are very correct. Uh, the only thing that typically people prefer to star uh, in, in the first place. It's not, it's not just that it's, it's not a very big deal, but there's actually no, a little question. Uh, does operator X change the wave function? Is, it, is X multiplication by X similar to differentiation or is it is just a multiplication? Well, doesn't the wave function depend on X? It does depend, but multiplication of, of this X times this wave function. Does it change the function itself? Does it matter to multiply from the left or from the right? No. Yes. Yes. Vice coach, coach is correct. So if it doesn't matter, let, let me just say start and I'm skipping that side. Oh, gosh. Okay. Did I violate anything? No. Okay. And now let's encircle the psi star times psi. Okay. And, and tell what, what, it, what it is. Oh, <laughs> so what is psi star times psi? You stay here and I will, so that you do not feel upset, I'll interview the rest of the class. Yeah. Because psi star is a complex conjugate? Yes. Isn't it, isn't it just zero? No, it can be one if it would be a plane wave, but it is not a plane wave. <laughs> um, pounds. Oh, Anything in my brain. Not me too. One. One. No. Do we tribute? One. I think it's 
She so played too much fun. Yeah, she's never fun. So I've got nothing in my brain to make you go. Is it just size squared? Oh, yeah. What is uh, no one? No one of you thought wrong. So size squared, but what is the meaning of size squared? Gameplay. Uh -uh. Okay. No. Let's scroll our memory back towards postulates. No density. Density of states is in the energy space. Probability squared is density of states. Okay. Only if size. Wait, wait. Listen to the uh, second vice coach. Okay, yeah, Fred. About what? I thought that. Just repeat. You, you've told something very, very smart. Was it density like of states? I like mm -hmm. somehow just like forgot what we're even talking about. Density of states in the energy space. And here, uh, say, Psi and Psi star depends on X, and the product also depends on X. Yes. Yes. So how to call their product? So, like Psi squared or? Yes, how to call Psi squared? It's not density of states or is and that's Another common word that starts with letter P. Probability, Probability density. density yeah. Probability density, yes, probability density. Okay. Said it. Just P, P of X. Walking over and I panic and forget. <laughs> Probability density, you can call it P of X. So stressful. Sorry about, about stress, but I think you, you memorize this uh, meetings to the rest of truth for the whole life. <laughs> so um Let's consult with between coaches. So, Eva, what what should we take? Which steps should we take? What should we advise to Melody? Gmx into the integral instead of psi star star psi. Okay. I don't know if that's yeah, that's that's the right right advice. Yeah. Confirm. Yes. What? <laughs> Okay, now um, uh, let's discuss what, what will be our next advice to her. Oh. Should, should we uh, suggest that she connects mathematical expressions with yeah. computer codes? Probably, yeah. Probably. So which line should, should we advise her to her? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and what is the computer code? Yes. yes. So, so this is really yeah. integral. Account for the integral. Yes. Um, this is this x is for this x, and so this p of x probability density goes is this. Yes. Right. Let's give them round of very good. Excellent. Your 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 watch is over. Thank you. All right. Re yeah. Really good good job. Let me carry it for for a minute and then design. Who will be the next? Okay. <laughs> no, next hero, next champion. <laughs> hey, you're like a gladiator. Okay. So. Back gonna have the whole thing here. Their screen lost. Huh? No, I believe the recording will, will go in a, in a regular way. So let's, uh, if you want to leave literally at seven, we need to really speed up. If you don't care about time, I can, you need to go? Yeah, I kind of care. You kind of care? Okay. Yeah, okay, so let's just make a bottom line and formulate a task for the next line. I <laughs> I, I I thought she was she was symbolizing playing playing piano. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, you did make a correspondence between definition of expectation value, mathematical sense, and a line in a code, and this line of a code, this expectation value is plotted, right? So now we need to find the next thing is to find what is prop three, and find. V, repeat the same uh, heroic feat. Find which line of the code defines prop three, and how to uh, write it down in the uh, way of the um, mathematical way. So let me 
let me share screen and I, I will speed up and do a few more things so that we, we get in time oh, next time. Sam's the next champion. I'm trying to set French. Okay, just write it down. Don't worry, Sam. Sam said he found it, Demetrius. I did not say that. Yeah, yeah, go back and go back and report it. So we need to find probe three. So let me be let me be a champion. I found it. So line Y one eighty uh probe three equals psi three dot times conjugated of psi three. Yes. So it agrees well with what Melody already wrote for us. So P of X equals psi star which is conjugated times psi okay make sense now what is the next step we need to find where psi star is defined let's uh, scroll <gasps> just line before it 179 179 let me humbly focus camera on uh, myself and it tells psi three equals g tau multiplied by psi three. What is it? What is the next question? To find what is what is g tau, right? Three. I found it. It's line 140. 140. Yeah, we'll probably skip going to the board just to be quicker. 140. So G tau one uh, line 140, 140, and it defines G tau um, equals G tau three equals yes. exponential matrix E X P M minus I times tau tau divided by H bar multiplied by hem three. Oh yes, yeah. so no one told me like it's it's a, a, a food that was three years overdue. <laughs> okay. I am as overrated. So <laughs> so <laughs> e to the minus i over h bar so Hamiltonian times tau. Now the question to to everyone: What is this? <laughs> That it's the Gaussian. Ah, uh -uh, you're wrong. Oh. Uh, no, uh, with, with all due res with all due respect, <laughs> Gaussian when there is a x squared. Well, there's no squared. Yes. Is it just a linear function? No, it's not like Well, um, come on, we need to rem remember. Looks like the time dependent. Independent. Well, Schrodinger equations do have differential operators, and they have something on the left and right side. Huh? What? Uh, I, so, once again, if you put Hamiltonian into the power of exponential and multiply by time, like which concept do you remember from the class? What else? We have total number of concepts is less than two dozens. Same as in, in the alphabet, and we all are able to memorize alphabet. So two dozen concepts are okay. <laughs> Was it something you told us we should remember in our study? Something we start we something we discussed before Schrodinger equation, and something we used to predict the future. It's not the evolution the time uh, evolution. here is our change it's the time evolution operator yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I think, so this is time uh, evolution operator. We typically call it U, right? And this, this line 179 is a most important line of the whole code of our whole class. And for some of us of, of our whole life, at least for myself. So it tells, you see, there is a Psi three and Psi three. It's the same function. So Psi at time at X and time T plus Delta T, or instead of Delta T, you can put little tau is equals to Psi of X and T. So it is past. Here is the future, and here we put just evolution operator. So by applying evolution operator, we go from past to the future. And as soon as we learn wave function, we can find probability distribution and find expectation value of position. I, uh, I was not focusing on the whiteboard, but I should. So let's just keep have it on, on the board. Uh, stop sharing to have it on our recording. So, any questions to to the statement? Will you be able to remember it in the middle of the night? Let's hope so. Let's let's try. So, uh, let's form. For, uh, we, we need to to depart very soon. Let's formulate what we need to remember in the middle of the night. Yes, but how to say it in the language of mathematical uh, expressions or on, on human words? Just so Eva will try to help all of us to formulate a warning that we need to memorize in the middle of the night. So how to convert the content of the line 179 into human words. If possible at all. Ask you a question. The evolution operator. Helps us to, to go predict the future. Predict the future based <laughs> on, on the knowledge of the past. Yeah. Right? Yes. So this is the main uh, part of what we have. So we have, we program wave function of the past we program evolution operator and we get wave function of the future. Yeah. This is the heart of this code. Like, well, so try to mem remember it in the middle of the night. Yeah. And when you will do presentations, when you already will be done with your projects, I, I'm not hiding. I will invite a lot of guests. Okay. They will be impressed by your yeah. research research results. But, David can show up again. but they are going to ask questions how your results were obtained. and answer just memorizing and rep uh, reproducing this thing will answer most of the questions so it is your answer on how your results that you haven't even started but you will get in like months and a half were obtained and you just need to repeat after eva what, what she did hey okay. everyone we're just we're just doing it so what are you gonna do what is wake up and say evolution operator predicts the future from what we know about the past. Evolution and then falls back asleep. Future from what we know about the past. Yep. Okay. Back in REM sleep. Super. Super. <laughs> so what I'm going to announce now to the camera. The meeting, meeting, is done. meeting is done. So many thanks for your patience, dedication to the course. You don't have any active homework right now. Right? Relax.